All right, so in this video, we want to show you how to set up and use the polling function in Zoom so that you can uh, have some quick engagement activities uh, with your students during your synchronous teaching. The first thing we need to do is make sure that polling is enabled on your Zoom account. So we're going to come to zoola.zoom.us. And if asked, we're going to sign in. And if you haven't signed in recently, you may be asked to provide your single sign-on Xavier username and password. All right, so to check and make sure that polling is enabled, we're going to click on Settings in the left side menu. And we're going to scroll down about a third of the way. Until we find the one setting that is, says polling, add polls to the meeting controls. This allows the host to survey the attendees. Uh, now, polling is only accessible to the host of a meeting, not the co-hosts, and um, definitely not the participants. Uh, if the button is not uh, blue and turned on, if it's grayed out like this, make sure you click on it, slide it over to turn it blue. Zoom will tell you that your settings have been updated and you are good to go with your polls. Now, there are two ways to set up polls for your classes and meetings. You can set them up ahead of time, or you can do them on the fly in the middle of class. It's really not too complicated to do them in the middle of class, um, but it does obviously take a little bit of focus. Uh, and so if you're trying to talk and do them at the same time, it's a bit of a challenge. Uh, but if students are doing something else while you're setting up your poll, it's really not that difficult to do them as you're going. Um, but if you know what you're gonna do ahead of time, uh, I'd encourage you to come and do it uh, beforehand. If you want to do it beforehand, stay logged into the Zula Zoom website, uh, come to your meetings page, and select the class that you want to add the poll to. Now, one thing to remember with Zoom is that even though it lists all of these class meetings that I've set up as a recurring class, uh, it really treats them all as the same meeting. They all have the same ID, they all have the same settings applied to them. So if I create a poll in uh, today's class, uh, it's going to be applied to every single one of these uh, dystopia classes, everything that's got the same meeting ID. Uh, I say that just because you may want to come back and then delete the poll afterwards just to kind of get rid of it uh, if you're going to be doing a lot of polling. Um, but I'm going to select the class that I want to do the polling in. Here's my basic settings, right? And we'll scroll down to the bottom here, right? Um, and if you've never done polling before, what you'll see down here at the bottom is you have not created any poll yet. So this is all the way down at the bottom of the page. Let's click on Add. And I'm just going to do a quick student wellness check. It's good to give your polls names because if you have multiple polls, in a class, uh, it's going to list them all here, and uh, it's a lot easier to differentiate them. But it also makes it easier to reuse them as well. So a student wellness check, this is something you could use uh, you know, every day in class or once a week in class as well. So the first option after we create the title is, do we want to make the poll anonymous? Do we want to connect the student's username or, or login name in Zoom with, with their response? I'm going to say for this one that no, I don't. I want to keep it anonymous. As you can see here, you're limited to 255 characters uh, for your question, so it can't be uh, terribly long. Uh, but again, these are pretty simple uh, student engagement type activities you can do with polls. Uh, so you want to keep the, the questions pretty, pretty basic. Uh, all the questions in the polls are multiple choice, um, but you can give students the option of either giving just a single response or multiple responses. I'm going to leave this one as single choice. And then I'm going to go ahead and type the, the options they have. Uh, let's say great, good, just okay, and not so good. You have to give at least two uh, options. Um, everything else is optional. And if you're not going to use the other other slots, uh, just leave them blank like this. 
Uh, you can give up to 10 responses, although I wouldn't uh, recommend it. it. It takes up a lot of screen space and it can be a little bit confusing uh, for people working on small screens. Uh, you can see you can add uh, other questions to your poll as well if you want to. Um, but again, uh, in terms of student engagement, I think this probably works best if you just do one or maybe two questions uh, instead of having a whole bunch of questions. If for some reason I needed to get rid of this question, if I wanted to change the whole thing, uh, I could just click delete instead of uh, overriding everything as well. But once we're done, we're going to go ahead and click on save. And we will see down here, uh, as I said, if you give the poll a name, it makes it a lot easier uh, to, to identify it, although you can click on the, the little carrot next to it uh, to see what the questions and uh, answers are as well. If I needed to edit it for some reason, I could come over here and click on yes. And if I wanted to get rid of it, I could go ahead and delete it here as well. And if I wanted to create another separate poll, Right. I could go ahead and do that as well. So I could have multiple polls set up for one or multiple classes uh, as well. Now, if you set up polling for the first time for your account, you're going to have a new button here right, with the little graph bar uh, that says polling. Uh, and if you have a small uh, window for Zoom, uh, it may get folded into this more button right here. So we're in the middle of class uh, and we want uh, to uh, ask students a question. Uh, um, all we do is go ahead and click on polling. Right. Um, and like I said, it can get a little tricky if you've got multiple polls in here about identifying which poll it is. You do want to be careful of that. But since I only have one poll in this class, it's pretty easy. Right. It gives me a quick preview. Zoom is pretty good as it is with breakout rooms about look, previewing for you, uh, the host, what you're about to present uh, to the participants, the students. Right? So it gives you a last two chance to kind of check things. If I needed to edit it, I could go ahead and click on this and we'll see how that works in a minute here, but it's going to take me back to that uh, Zulu Zoom um, website. All right. But if I'm happy with the poll as it is, I'm going to go ahead and click launch poll. And this is the screen that the students are now being presented with in my class. And all they need to do is click on the option um, and click on submit. Um, and then as the host, as the teacher, you can watch and see how many of them have completed it um, and how many people have not completed it. Right? So if you, you give them a minute and you've got three or four left, you can just kind of say, okay, I've got three or four people who haven't done it yet. Would you please go ahead and do it? You can see a timer here uh, in terms of how long you've had this open as well. When you're done and you want uh, students to not be able to give any more responses, we're going to go ahead and click on end poll. And then there's one more step that you need to remember. Right? Um, this is you've just you've closed the poll. You've prevented students from responding to it so far. Um, but you haven't presented them with the results yet. So you want to click it on this blue button down here that says share results, which will now show students a bar, a breakdown of uh, how they responded to things. Uh, let's say 50% of students said they were great, another 20% said they were good, um, and uh, the rest said they were just okay. So that's not too, too bad. But you can keep this up as you want to talk about it, right? Uh, students are going to have that separate window on their screen. Um, and then when you're done with the poll, right, you want to go ahead and click on Stop Sharing. And then uh, if you hit it on accident, you can go back and share the results again. You can close it. And again, if you wanted to pull those results back up, um, if you were talking for a few minutes and said, well, let's, let's go back and see what, what everybody uh, said about that one question you can pull it back up and share those results again or you can even relaunch the poll as well right? so you can see that there's a lot of opportunity for flexibility and adaptation as you're working on it as well and that's the essentials of uh, using polls in uh, zoom now like i said you can do this on the fly as well right if you click on poll and let's say I wanted to edit this uh, poll before I launched it to the students. I click on edit here. Right? And as you can see, 
Zoom is going to take me back to that website, right? um, and it's going to give me uh, the chance to actually create a new poll. So I'm going to make a quick little survey here for student feedback, and I'm going to make it anonymous. Ask them what was the best thing about class today. Let's say, let's make this multiple choice. Um, the discussion, the activity, obviously being a little vague here for our example. Um, so group work. Um, I spelled that right. Okay, we're going to go ahead and click on save. All right. And now, uh, again, it's a little tricky. We went out of Zoom. All right, Zoom is still running. Um, so we need to come back and make sure we're kind of back in Zoom. We've still got the polls window here. But now where it says poll one student wellness check, right? we've got a little carrot next to it. If we click on that, we can see now here's our second poll, student feedback survey. Right? Um, and then I can go ahead and click on this and as you can see this looks a little bit different because students can do the multiple choice or multiple select uh, option here I'm going to launch the poll and students can give me a little bit of feedback it reminds me that it's, it's set up as that multiple select uh, setting and when we're done I can go ahead and end the poll and again share the results then once we're done discussing it I can go ahead and click on stop sharing and then to get rid of the window just go ahead and click on that so if it's a little clunkier, it's easier to kind of uh, grab the wrong poll sometimes as well. It can get a little confusing. Um, so you do want to be careful about having too many polls uh, if you're not familiar with this. But there you have the basics of using polls in Zoom. Those polls will, will continue and remain associated with, with that class, with that recurring class, right? So they'll, they'll be available for every session of that recurring class until I actually go back into Zoom's website and delete uh, the poll. And so that's, again, something you'd want to keep in mind um, if you were using a lot of polls because it could get pretty cluttered as well. Um, there is no way to uh, export the data for polls. Uh, there's no way to save the data for polls. Uh, they're really not designed for that level of um, analysis, right? They're really there for quick participant engagement um, and kind of status checks, um, quick little feedback things. Right? So if you want for some reason to kind of save that information for later, you might want to do a quick screenshot or ask one of your students to record the results or something like that. Um, but you're not going to be able to go back into Zoom uh, and download the data uh, from the poll later on. Okay, as usual, uh, thanks for watching. If you have questions about polling in Zoom or any other questions, uh, please reach out to us uh, at CAT, and we'll be glad to uh, help you as best we can.